Hello and welcome to This Is Portsmouth, the show that shines a spotlight over our beautiful island city. We have been away from your screens for a while, but we are so excited to be back. Yes, we have a jam-packed show lined up for you today, so I hope you're ready. My name's Oliver. And my name is Charlotte. And, and this, this is Portsmouth. Portsmouth. <laughs> And a very warm welcome back. We are live from the University of Portsmouth's Eldon Building to bring you some of the latest stories happening around the city. Yes, that's right. We are students from the University of Portsmouth and it's our job to keep you up to date with all the latest Pompey-based news, fashion, gossip, sport and so much more. With that being said, let's see what's coming up on today's show. We're paying a visit to the Journeys Light Festival International over at St Mary's Church. As well as learning a little bit about some of the groundbreaking new enzyme research in Portsmouth. But first, the University of Portsmouth offers its students the option to take a year out of their studies to a placement year. Last year, we got the chance to speak to students that are currently on their placement to see how the scheme is beneficial for both students and businesses. It's fair to say that many people are aware of the value of doing and achieving a degree. Students can opt to do a placement year after completing their second uni year. Placement schemes not only benefit students, they can also be a great support to businesses. We want to find out firsthand what day-to-day -day life is like as a placement student. So I'm Gowry, I study international business, but I'm currently on my placement year. As a student coming from uni into work, what incentives would you say there are? Something that like was always a must for me was being able to do a placement. It just gives you an extra boost. My job makes me realise how important a placement is. How do you feel about moving back to uni? Do you have any specific plans with housing? How are you feeling about that? Being away for I think four or five months now made me I think appreciate university a lot more. People tell them university is the best time of your life. Like, you're going to remember this for the rest of your life. But when you step outside and you look at it from an outside perspective, I think it's so important just to get a taste of the real world. Housing's great. We've all got that sorted. Um, I'm actually weirdly looking forward to doing a dissertation. Um, yeah, no, can't wait. And honestly, I'm so excited. Opportunities a placement can bring are very beneficial to students, as well as bringing value to the companies that employ them. We spoke to Ollie, a manager at Atlas Copco, about how Portsmouth University placement students benefit their company. Uh, yes, my name's um, Ollie. I work for Atlas Copco Compressors. My position is analyst, marketing, and sales. What benefits does hosting placement students bring to the company? Benefiting from workload, improving teaching, communication, or mentoring skills? Yeah, no, it brings lots of benefits. So the students come and, you know, they've got like fresh ideas where you've come in and a different pair of eyes looking at something give you a completely different idea you know we have like our processes and ways of doing things and we'll just do it without thinking but i don't know you you and john have come in and you'll be like hang on why are you doing it like that then mm. there's probably a better way to do it in terms of mentoring it does give you opportunity to get involved in that and have a go through always learning stuff when you come in you'll be coming up with new ideas it makes you think like hang on a minute why are we doing it like that lightly it just challenges your current idea and it makes you learn from you to be proactive and always question why we do certain things. If your business would benefit from hosting a placement vacancy, contact the placement team that the university found via the port website. Many students have gone on to reap the benefits of their placement, such as Ben Margaret, who was an award winner of the film FMC Placement Student 2021. My name is Benjamin Margaret. I've recently just come off a self-employed placement year in which I ran my own promotional media company called Penny Drop Media, specialising in photography, videography and video editing for small businesses in and around the East Midlands. I recently found out that I'd won the Film and Media Communication School Placement Student of the Year, which was quite surprising but a really nice, a really nice feeling. When I first decided to take a placement, it was early, early in my first year actually, I thought, while this is great. I need more, I need some experience in the real world before I come back and embark on my third year. By the time I was getting interviews and that kind of thing, March rolled around in 2020 and I'm 
not sure if anyone remembers that, the opportunity of a self-employed placement came about. Now, I like to think of myself as a fairly creative person, business, it really scares me. Initially it was uh, CV writing, thankfully the careers team have a lot of templates, but also just the knowledge uh, from tutors as well. They've worked in industry for God knows how many years. They know what gets you jobs. Moodle and MyPort have so many great tools for career services and really just finding your feet in the big wide world, which I'm, I'm not really sure any of us are ready to take yet. But as I grew professionally and personally, so did my confidence in my own ability and the skill that I knew was there. I just wasn't sure I was able to get out and doing the placement helped me realise that. You're not at uni anymore. You're in the real world. You're doing stuff for yourself and you're answering to bosses and clients and all that kind of thing. What do you want to take out of it? Do you want personal growth? Do you want to make some money? But if you think you can really benefit from it, absolutely go for it. I can't think of a better way to spend the time in between your second and third year. And you come back to your third year feeling so much more ready. You, you feel, in a way, you've already graduated. But of course, you've still got that full year of doing what you love again. You know, I was never actually aware of all the different placement opportunities you're able to do for the university. I know, yeah. And this has definitely inspired me to kind of sort out a bit more, like get on top of things. No, definitely, definitely. Well, you saying that, Charlotte, if a placement is something you're interested in, our next guest will be right up your street. Joining us now in the studio is Alf, who has just completed his placement year, and he is here to tell us all about it. Welcome, Alf. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm Thank good. Thanks for coming me. in. Yeah, good. How have you been? I'm not too bad. Nice. It's uh, nice to have you here. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, sure. yeah thank you, Alf. Um, so what do you study? So I do criminology and cybercrime, and I'm in my third year, and uh, on my placement year, uh, I was going to do a placement, but obviously something happened, and uh, I wasn't able to do it anymore. So instead, I chose a module that allowed me to do a placement instead. It was called the Life Module. Uh, and my course leader, being a leader of the Cybercrime Awareness Clinic at Portsmouth, offered me a place to work for them as part of the module. So I worked on a project called Project Orpheus, which is the offline and the online prevention, upholding uh, security and holding back extremism. Uh, and part of that, so that is an, is an inter-university project between eight different universities across five or six different countries, I believe. So France, German, uh, uh, Belgium, and obviously the UK as well. Uh, and Portsmouth's role in that was uh, helping to create like education material mm. for universities and other teaching professionals uh, to teach about critical literacy skills. So critical literacy skills are how we digest information and sort of take in the world. So. We all, like the internet has so much information on it and it's hard to know what information you should believe in and yeah, forward. Yeah. Part of it, your critical literacy skills are digesting, disseminating and collating that information and forming your own opinions on it. And, and what made you decide wanting to do the placement and do all of that? So my original interest in disinformation and fake news sort of started on my gap year okay. where I worked in South Africa. So I worked in a youth delinquency centre in South Africa. So that was for only boys, all under 18, uh, been put in there for one reason or another. Mainly they couldn't go to school anymore. Um, so I was a youth care worker there and I had to help them with you know, their homework and all, of, all sorts of bits and bobs of daily life. I heard a lot of fake news go along there, right. a lot of alter narratives. So alter narratives are something that you believe in. There's no evidence for that. Uh, there's lots of groups like the EDL ISIS, many groups that have their own alter narratives and go about the world in just a silly way. Mm. Uh, so yeah, started there. I had all these boys telling me every day about things that just shouldn't happen. Yeah. A lot of unrepeatable things. Um, uh, so lost. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I came back. I always knew I was going to study cybercrime. Didn't know what university I was going to do it at. And after a bit of research, I worked out that Portsmouth was one of the best universities in the country for cybercrime. Uh, one of the first universities to offer it as well. So decided to come here. Came here for the first time. Absolutely fell in love with the city. Oh, nice brilliant. little island city. Brilliant. A lot going on. Very diverse as well. So yeah, yeah came to Portsmouth, studied cybercrime. Uh, and it turned out there was a lot more opportunities than I thought there was. So even though I thought I was going to be able to do a placement year, 
didn't quite work out that way, but the, the good alternative of offering me a module that, that allowed me to do that mm. was really helpful. So, That's really cool. Yeah. So when you did get around to doing that module, what sort of stuff did you do during, during your placement? So Project Orpheus had me doing quite a range of things. So initially I started off looking through all their education material that they'd uh, produced so far. Went through it, make sure there was no mistakes, stuff like that, make sure it all made sense, made sure it was digestible for students like us, mm. because at the end of the day, that is what it was for. Uh, and then they had me making some of my own stuff for it. So uh, first thing they had me doing was create memes about fake news, uh, like educational memes that would go along through the presentations. Uh, and it was me trying to be funny for the first time because studying a course like criminology and cybercrime is not the most creative I course. I the laughs, I bet, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was nice to sit down for a couple of weekends and create some memes. And um, how has that, that been beneficial for you, doing all of that? So, I, it helped me with sort of my marketing skills, I guess, uh, and my social media skills. I've never been a big fan of social media right. as it is. I'm quite sort of like pessimistic about it. I think it can be quite damaging, which is mm. probably why I'm interested in fake news and stuff. Mm. Um, but, oh, where was I? Talking about your marketing skills. Yeah, so part, another role I've got with the university is that I'm a student ambassador. So I work for the global office and the normal student ambassador office. They have me doing a lot of marketing in there. So I've actually, part of that is I've got a series called Living Sound for £25, where I go to Lidl, uh, try and do a £25 shop, and then I make a video about it. And then I can explain to international students that it's possible to eat and live cheaply. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so that was my first experience of creating my own uh, sort of material uh, for the university, and that those skills translated straight into my placement as well. And in one line, what advice would you give to someone who's currently thinking of a placement? Do your research and make sure it is in line with your current interests. Do your research, brilliant. Thank you so Thanks much, so Al, much, for coming Al. in today. And you've really made, that's an amazing story as well. You've really made me think about my place, because I still need to sort mine. I don't yeah, know you. I still need to sort mine we'll out. We'll find time after the show. Yeah. You're so right, Oliver. <laughs> There's loads more to placements than I was even aware of. And I hope that that might have inspired students and also any businesses out there thinking about offering such opportunities. If this refers to you, you can contact 023 9284 5181 for further details. I hope you got that. Yeah, I hope you wrote that down. <laughs> <laughs> now, our university is taking the steps to start changing the world. Thanks to a new £14 million lab, the University of Portsmouth is leading the world in enzyme research and helping to build a better, cleaner future. Genuinely world leading and possibly world saving in the way it will help us in the fight against waste. Okay, an enzyme is, well, we use enzymes uh, all around us in our uh, washing powder, it contains enzymes that digest grass stains off our clothes. And if we just had breakfast or lunch, our stomachs are full of enzymes digesting all those complicated carbohydrates into the sugars that we use for energy. So enzymes um, are quite ubiquitous in nature, but what we're doing here is turning those enzymes to use against plastics. Our team's been working on enzymes for a very long time. We work in all sorts of different polymers, uh, like DNA, for example, that's a natural polymer. But one of the polymers we're, we're really interested in is a polymer that covers the surface of green plant leaves, and that's called cutin. It protects the plants from uh, infection and from, it's a kind of waterproofing coating, and it's a natural polyester. It contains the same bonds that hold it together as plastic. So what we discovered is that enzymes that can digest these natural materials can also start to digest plastic materials and that's really exciting. So what we're doing is we're searching the world. We've got people in Southeast Asia in mangroves, uh, we've got people in rubbish dumps looking for new bacteria and new enzymes and a, a recent project is actually looking in places like hot springs where there's lots of bacteria there that are working at high temperatures and those enzymes are quite special because they're super fast and we're bringing those into the lab to try and design better ones. So we're not far away, we're talking a few years before we've got enzymes industrially ready to do this process. And this part here is, is where we're just getting into these new funded labs here from uh, the government um, allow us to scale things up, make lots of enzymes and then take them out into industry and really work with industry. 
I was privileged to meet the professors and the students and the Solent Lep and those who are involved in this project. I think an interesting thing is it's the private sector and the public sector and the university uh, working together and that's terrific. It seems to me based on what I've learned today, and I've learned a huge amount about enzymes and proteins and the circular economy, that it's genuinely world leading and possibly world saving in the way it will help us in the fight against waste. You learn on these sorts of trips a few big things. We have brilliant academics here in Portsmouth, hugely talented students doing world leading work. But there are also some very sobering things. I and mean, talking about the amount of waste in our clothes, talking away the, about the way that earthworms ingest plastics and the dangers to our environment, the dangers to our, our futures. But fundamentally, what I saw was a way of building a circular economy where plastics can be reused and put back into productive circulation rather than turning into waste that poisons our environment. We're very excited uh, because we've got a lot of very big industries that are coming to us now to say we can help you scale things up. Uh, and that's new territory for us, and, but it's also very exciting territory because we've got the fundamental science here in University of Portsmouth. We do fantastic world-class science, but we need that industrial support to scale things up. And that's just starting to happen. So watch this space. Some amazing stuff, guys, and I think that's something we should all keep an eye on. Now, from one piece of news to some more, it's time to find out the latest news for Portsmouth. On Wednesday last week, Portsmouth University students ditched the clubs in a night in in a campaign to make club owners more aware about the rise in spiking cases. A Royal Navy sailor has been commended for his bravery after charging into a flaming house that exploded on Nelson Avenue. He just said, I did what needed to be done and I didn't give it any second thought. And Horse Sand Fort, which can be seen off the coast of Portsmouth, has been sold for a whopping £715,000. It's said to be developed for leisure use. We are definitely going there afterwards. 100%. We're definitely having a look at that. <laughs> but now it's time to go over to St Mary's Church in Fratton as the people of Portsmouth have been exploring Journeys Festival International. Let's see what it's all about. I'm Eleanor Hawkridge. I'm the producer for Journeys Festival in Portsmouth. Behind me is where there is light, which is a huge light installation by Squid Soup. And to develop this, we worked with groups of asylum seekers and refugees who talked to us about where they find light in their lives at difficult times. And so the soundscape that you can hear is made up of their thoughts on where they can find light. Journeys Festival works across three cities, so the festival's live just now in Leicester, Manchester and Portsmouth. And in each city we have lots of different elements to the programme. With this one we've kind of been collaborating with Squid Soup and so the Artreach team have been working with the communities of refugees and asylum seekers that we have regular contact with to develop the soundscape element and then we've commissioned them and kind of co-produced the big light installation that you can see behind me. We've been working with Squid Soup for about a year now, developing the project, and we've run these community workshops where we've talked about the themes and recorded the soundscape. And then, excitingly, in the last 10 days, Squid Soup arrived in Fratton at St Mary's Church and started to build the installation with a team of helpers. Uh, it took about two days to go up, and there were 5,000 points of light on the frame hanging down and now it's open until Sunday. My role this year has been managing the practical aspects of getting the building ready for the installation and making sure that everything would arrive on time and that we've got volunteers, we've got a great team of volunteers from the church here and outreach staff who've all been here for many long hours managing it and keeping it going. Just yesterday morning in a two hour slot we had 167 people through so I think as people are hearing more about it we're just getting more and more bookings and people turning up and wanting to see it which is really really great to see. For the first time this year we have Journeys Festival in Leicester, Manchester and Portsmouth all at exactly the same time so this installation 
is here in Fratton at St Mary's Church but it's also at Leicester Cathedral and Holy Rood Church in Manchester. It's been challenging to develop and get this kind of up and running in three places at once but what's really nice about that is that the audiences are really enjoying it. It's been really lovely to see people coming in and knowing that it's kind of being experienced in different parts of the country all at the same time and that the work, I mean, really we've not been able to do much live for a couple of years now. Last year our programme all moved online, which was a great programme and, and a great festival and a different experience, but it's been really nice this year to see people actually coming into the space and really enjoying seeing other people and seeing other people's reactions. It's been really special. Wow, those lights really were mesmerising. I can't believe how beautiful they were. We'll definitely have to go see them sometime. Yeah, we've got lots to do. We've got to do our placement, <laughs> we've got to see the fort, and we've got yeah. some lights, so we'll do it after the show. I'm so up for that. But unfortunately, that is all we have time for today. Oh, it has been a whirlwind of a show, and we're sad that it's over, but please do not worry, as we'll be back on your screens in the coming weeks. If you would like to get in touch with us, or if you have a story you'd like to share, please contact us through our Instagram or Facebook using the handle at this is Portsmouth TV. Or if sending an email is more your thing, you can email us at tisp at port.ac.uk. A big thank you to our lovely studio audience. Yeah! We didn't pay them. <laughs> and to Alf for coming in today and talking to us. Thank you so much, Alf. And a big thank you to everyone at home for tuning in. And with all of that being said, it's goodbye from me, Charlotte. And from me, Oliver. Thank you so much, everyone. And we'll see you next time. But until then, you ready? Ready. This, this is Portsmouth. Portsmouth. <laughs> okay.